Hey everyone, in today's Photoshop video, I wanna show you how to create your own sparkle effect in Photoshop. You could overlay this in your entire image or make things like jewelry, diamond rings, and things like that really pop and get that glowing sparkle effect. I wanna show you three different ways to do this because I wanna show you a couple of really easy beginner techniques, but they don't give you full control. So towards the end of the video, I'll show you a much more advanced technique, but I'll walk you through very step-by-step. -step so even if you're a beginner, you could follow along. As usual, I have the latest version of Photoshop as a free trial in the description if you don't have it and you wanna try it out. And my course is also in the description where it covers everything you need to know about Photoshop for beginners. So let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. I'm using this image here from pixels.com that I'm gonna show as the demo and I'm gonna make this diamond ring here sparkle in this image. So the very first thing we wanna do, we want to duplicate this layer here. So we wanna have two of them. So I'm gonna grab this layer here. If there's a lock icon, just press the lock icon to unlock it and grab it and bring it to this plus sign and let go. Now you have two layers. With the top layer selected, it should have this gray box around it. Go up over here to filter and then go down till you see render and then choose lens flare. Okay, now with the lens flare right here, you have to make sure you grab it and bring it on top of the ring because we can't move this one later. So we're gonna put it right over here on top of the ring and we could change the brightness of it if we want to. And you could change the effect of it too by choosing different lens types. I could change it to 105 mil, 35, 50 to 100. So you see you get different effects out of each one and you could go ahead and control the brightness of each one. I'll stick with the movie. I like these lines here that it creates and I'll press okay. So now I have this on top of my ring, just like that. Now, if I missed a placement of it, I would have to do that process one more time, but I could actually dial down how bright it is. I could select this layer and I could change the blending mode here from normal to lighten here. And then I could change the opacity down and it will change how much of it is coming through. So that's at 100. Maybe I just want it to be over here somewhere. So that's one way to do this is by using the lens flare effect here in Photoshop. The second way to do this is you could actually buy a PNG, a photo here, and lay it on top of the jewelry or your entire image if you want. So let me show you that next. You could go to this website here and I'll put a link in the description to this website, but you could basically download this and you could then lay this on top of your jewelry or your image or whatever you're doing in Photoshop. So I went ahead and downloaded it, but this does require Adobe Illustrator. So then I open Adobe Illustrator, which is this image, because these are what's called a vector based graphic, meaning it doesn't matter how big you make them, they're gonna retain the resolution and look really sharp. So now I just selected this selection tool for the group selection. I selected this right here and then I went and right click on it and then export selection and I saved that as a PNG and I press export. Then I went back to Photoshop with my image. Let me delete the step we just did here. And then I opened that image here. So I went to File, Open, and here's that asset right here. That's what I just saved, opened it here. And with it open, I just grabbed it and brought it to this other picture and dropped it over here. Now I could resize it. You see it's its own layer, so I could put it anywhere I want. So I could put it right here. I could make it much smaller, even if I want to make it a tiny dot, I could do that. And now it's on top of that. I could do the same thing we did before, changing the screen blend mode here. And I could reduce the opacity here to not make it as bright. So that's the other way to do it. And the third way is the most advanced way, but it gives you so much control. And that is by creating your own brush. So we need to open a new project, create a brush, but then once we create it, we'll always have it. We could use it anytime we feel like it to create this effect and we don't have to buy anything. So let me show you that next. Go up here. Let me go ahead and delete this actually. So we'll continue to work with this image. But right now, go up to File and go to New. And we wanna create a new Photoshop document. It needs to be 1080 pixels by 1080 pixels. It could be less, but if you follow my numbers, everything is gonna look the same for your project. The resolution is 300 RGB color 
and my background is set to white. So all these settings, if you want to pause and do the same thing here, you could name it if you want, but we don't care about the, this project file because we're not even going to save this project. We're going to save the brush that we're going to make. So press create down here. Let's go ahead and create a shape. We need to create a shape. So I'm going to go ahead and just unlock this background layer and I'm going to come down here to the plus sign and create a new layer. We need a new layer with the transparent background. So I'm not going to touch this layer. I'm going to go to this layer. Now let's create a shape. Come over here, click down on this tool and choose ellipse tool. There's a keyboard shortcut for it, U, if you want to select that. Once you select it, come over here, just go ahead and click and drag. And we want to create something along this size right here. So about half the size of our whole canvas here. And I'm going to click the fill here to make it black. So I'm going to choose black. So the fill appearance is going to turn to black. Now I'm going to come over and select the move tool right here. And I'll bring this right to the middle of my canvas here. So right in the center. So that was one step. We just created a black ellipse here with this shape. You could actually make it a little bit narrower here when you create it. So I'll make mine pretty narrow. So make a shape that looks something like this. Then with this layer selected here, come up to filter and go to blur. And we need to change the motion blur. Click this. And rasterize this layer. Click this option. There we go. Now, these are the numbers that we're looking for. We need to be at a 90 degree angle to get this effect. If you're not, it's going to look totally different. So make sure this is set to 90 here. And this should be somewhere maybe 500. That's not bad. Let's go with 590 degrees. Press OK. Now with this selected, I'm going to duplicate it. So I'm going to bring it down here and drop it on the plus sign. Now we have two of the same. Now I need to rotate it. If you, again, with the move tool right here, if you come all the way up here, you should get this double arrow. The double arrow lets you rotate that layer. Go ahead and rotate it till you get about 90 degrees here. If you hold down shift two, it's going to help you rotate this a little bit easier. You could go up to here to edit and then go to free transform and then transform right here and rotate 90 degrees clockwise. That'll get you the same effect I just showed you. Okay, so we got this here. Now we need to combine these two different layers that we created. So select one, hold down shift on your keyboard, select the other one. And now if you right click here with the two selected, there's an option if you come down called merge layers, select this. So we basically wanted those to make us one big plus sign here. And I want to blur this even more. So with this selected, I'm going to come up to filter, go to blur, Gaussian blur, and somewhere around seven or eight should be good here and press OK. So now it's blurred even more. We're almost there. We need to duplicate this one more time. Drag it down here to the plus sign and let go. Now we have another one. And what I want to do with this other one is I want to come to edit and then go to the free transform tool this time, free transform. And then it's going to give me these dots here where I could grab it and make it smaller. So I'll make it this size to kind of fit this square. And then I'll bring it right to the center. There we go, right in the center of the other one. And then I'll grab the corners here till I get the two arrows so I could rotate it. Basically trying to make this star shape right here. I'll move it if it's not right in the center here. If I need to move it a little bit, I could go ahead and move it. You could always press the arrow tool to move it up and down if you need to. I'll go ahead and press the check mark up here. This is going to be our brush. So to turn this into a brush, we still need to combine these two layers. So I'm going to select this, hold down shift, select this. Again, right click on it and then merge them. We did this before, same step. It makes one layer here that I could turn on and off. Now to turn this into a brush, you want to go to edit here and you want to choose down here, define brush preset. Select this and name your brush. So I'm going to name this sparkle diamond. Press OK. And we have that brush. You see that you just turn it into a brush here. I could come and click and turn this into my sparkle effect, but 
We don't want to do it here. We want to do it to our image. So right now I'm going to come up here and just press X and delete this document. So that whole time we just created our brush. That's what we were working on. So we have that brush now. Now to choose your brush tool, if it did not auto select, that's just this one right here, the brush tool. It's also the keyboard shortcut B. And now if I come over here on my diamond, I got to make sure I'm set to white foreground color. So come over here, select this right here and choose white and press OK. So I chose brush. I chose this as the foreground color to be white. And then I'm going to come and change my brush size here to be a little bit smaller. So let's go maybe with 200. Now you could kind of get a size here. Now if I click here, Look at that, it just created that glow for me. I'm gonna undo that because we don't wanna do this right on top of the image. We wanna create a layer. So I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna press the plus sign. And now I have a layer. Now with this layer, I'm gonna select my brush and come over here and click. You get the same results, but now it's on its own layer that I could turn on and off. And if I select it and go to edit and free transform, I could actually make it any size I want. I can move it around. I could go ahead and rotate it anywhere I want, just like that. Make it a little bit smaller. Here we go. It's kind of too big. I'll put it right over here in the center. And now we could still blend it. So the blend modes that we've looked at, we could do that here too. Change the blend mode here to lighten or screen here. Maybe lighten would work well. And I could change the opacity here if I don't want it to glow so much. Could go ahead and change that. And one last thing to really make this filter pop, with that layer selected, I'll double click on it and I'll add an outer glow. Select this. And with the check mark, select this line right here where you could change some of the settings of the outer glow. So you can make the opacity much higher here and let me see if I try some of these other blend modes, darken. Actually, screen looks pretty good on that. Uh, so these are my settings for that filter, the outer glow here, which is called the layer style that you put on top of a layer. I'll press OK. So this is before, and this is after. Now, since you have the brush tool now, you could do this as much as you want. You could put it here, 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 here. It's a brush, which is really useful. And you could always go ahead and rotate it here with the free transform tool. So they're not just all in square shape and you could resize them. You could put them anywhere you want within your image here. Very, very cool to use that. And I'll show you one last thing here with this. You could go and press this box right here. You'll get this brush preset. And if you select shape dynamic here, you could change how the brush is affected. So if I change it here, you could see the lines of how it's going to be more random. This is very much in line. This is more random. So play around with these settings and then come to your image and click and drag. Look at that. You could just click and drag and see what kind of effect you get. So if that doesn't look right, you could go ahead and change the spacing here, the roundness, a lot of different options you have that you could play around with for your brush. So if I wanna just go ahead and do something like this, I could go ahead and do that. But you get the idea. You could just click to create these sparkles or you could drag it to get that effect. And that's over here in the brush setting. And those are the three different ways that you could create the sparkle effect in Photoshop. I know the third one was very advanced, a lot of different steps, but now you have that brush forever. You didn't have to buy anything and you could create this effect now every time you open an image Click that brush, select it, change the size of it, and then make it work for your image. It could be jewelry, it could be anything. It could be in your whole image, exactly as I showed you. I hope you found this useful. Please give it a thumbs up. I post easy to follow Photoshop and other creative tool videos on this channel every single week, and I hope to see you again.